back. Uh, we have with us Professor T.C. Anand, the Chief Statistician of India, the head of the uh, CSO, the Statistical, Central Statistical Organization, to explain to us uh, the uh, GVA and the GDP numbers. Uh, good evening, uh, Professor Anand. Thank you very much for joining us. So I'll tell you the first confusion that we have. Last quarter, for the fourth quarter, the GVA had come in at 6.1 and the GDP at 7.5. There was an expectation that there will be a one percentage point difference between the GVA and the GDP because, for one thing, taxes have been increased. You know, fuel taxes, for instance, have gone up, if anything, in this quarter. But this time we find that the GVA and the GDP number are the same. Why is that? Uh, in order to understand that, you have to sort of, first of all, the difference between the two, as you quite correctly notice, note is the net indirect tax, indirect taxes less subsidies. Mm. Now, the, the method in which they are calculated uh, needs to be understood. Mm. In current prices, mm. the indirect taxes and subsidies are calculated from the government accounts data. Mm. So there's no confusion there. Mm. The numbers are exactly what the accounts show. Okay. In constant prices, in the new series, the manner in which net indirect taxes and subsidies are calculated is as per the recommendation of the SNA and IMF manual, uh, the last, the, essentially the ca tax collection is grown by a physical indicator reflecting the out value of output. Mm -hmm. Now, so what happens is we grow over the last quarter, mm -hmm. the first quarter of last year okay. with various physical indicators available on I indirect taxes. And that is what uh, generates the growth in, if you like, in net indirect taxes and subsidies. So the difference between the two, mm. the, the internal deflator arises out of the difference between the growth in the current numbers, that is the, uh, what is there in accounts, and the growth in the physical indicators which is available from various sources. Uh, no, I mean, are we uh, to therefore understand that indirect taxes have not grown at all? Uh, is that why you have uh, 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 no difference no, between... No, please understand. No, in what does it mean by saying indirect taxes at constant prices? Okay. Okay? Uh, now, indirect taxes at, at constant, constant prices, prices have not grown. Have not grown by that much. They have grown. You can work out what the amount by which they have... Yeah, hmm. but it's at constant prices. Okay. Now, at constant prices, indirect taxes simply refers to the indicator of volume okay oh, well it is still uh, uh, confusing now uh, how should we understand uh, the fact that last quarter in the fourth quarter there was such a large difference there see the difference will basically the, the method is the same whatever volatile and remember also further the growth is on a year on year basis yes but the method remaining exactly the same the growth the difference re reflects the growth between the volume indicator and the value indicator. Okay, so we should understand that in constant terms, uh, indirect taxes did not grow. That's right. Current prices data is separately given. Okay, and yes. And that will match with what is there in government accounts. Okay, yes. Current, in current prices, of course, there, there is a difference between uh, uh, the uh, GDP, which stands at, I think, 8.8% .8 in nominal terms. So perhaps uh, you could account for it. Uh, okay, overall, what is your sense, sir? If it is 7%, uh, the GDP number, uh, it looks like we are kind of slowing, isn't it? Because uh, the expectation was, I mean, the, the, the GDP in the fourth quarter itself was 7.5%. See, there are two elements. Again, let me separate out between current prices and constant prices. Insofar as the current prices numbers are concerned, we are slowing because overall price levels have been coming down. Mm. Admittedly, the GDP deflator is not negative, partly because it's a mix of CPI and WPI, but it's significantly lower than what it was last year. Uh, insofar as constant prices are concerned, the quarter and quarter figures are not bad and it's comparable to what was there last year. Last year, I think the constant price number at first quarter was 7.4. This is 7.1. It's not shown a significant increase, but it's in the same brawl park. Okay. What would you estimate, sir, the uh, nature of growth in the coming quarters? Uh, do you think we would do better than 7%, uh, 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 say, in the second half or even in the current quarter? 
look, I don't want to speculate on that because there are number of factors which will be taken into when we go into the next quarter. First part which you want to remember is what happens in agriculture. Mm. Agriculture in this number, the crop production is pretty much driven by what we already knew in the third quarter because the rubby estimates then and the rubby estimates now are not very different. Mm. The agriculture estimate therefore to a significant extent is driven from the agriculture year 2014-15. It is still too early for us to say what the agriculture year 2015-16 will be like because the first estimate is not yet due. Mm. That will give us the assessment of what the impact of the monsoons has been because mm. the first estimate will pretty much be on a, a cropped area. So that will be a big if which will determine whether we slow down because last year was bad. Mm. Now if we can at least maintain the base effect will help us and agriculture estimates will improve estimates mm. but that needs to be seen. Because this year also as the monsoon has not been that good. Yes. So we'll have to see how that translates to. Okay. Uh, on the positive side, number of sectors are showing positive growth. Manufacturing has shown positive growth. Uh, the services have tended to show fairly positive growth. And at the moment, we are on the corporate side going on the basis of estimates from the listed companies who file advance estimates. We may hope that when everybody's numbers come in, this could go up further. So that's something which we will have to wait and see. Okay. Uh, 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 Professor Anand, uh, Shubda Rao, the chief economist from Yes Bank, is also with us in this panel. Uh, Shubda has a question for you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. I just had one question on the uh, seeming uh, disconnect between the government expenditure and the high frequency data on the government spending in CAPEX. So, how are these numbers tying up? Is it because uh, is it the revenue expenditures going into GFCE and the government led capital expenditures going into GFCF, uh, gross capital formation? So, uh, just wanted to have some kind of direction on these lines. Uh, in my, I, I, I am not very certain on what the position on government expenditure is, but the two points. One, government expenditure will be as per CGA up to 30th of June. Secondly, insofar as the GVA calculation is concerned, it will be principally on the revenue side. Mm. And the capital formation expenditure will not figure in GVA so much and will be taken up in GFCF. Okay. No, that point is taken, but it looks like capital formation is decent at 4.8 percent, but government final consumption expenditure is only 1.1 percent. So, should we assume that a lot of the government expenditure has been accounted for in capital formation in the GFCF? Th that, that is not inconsistent with the way the current budget has worked out. Okay. Because the, there has been a considerable squeeze on current expenditure and a much greater emphasis on capital expenditure. All right. Uh, well, uh, 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 any other thoughts uh, in terms of uh, uh, how services and industry might progress? Is there any weak links that uh, you have noted, Professor Anand? You spoke about agriculture at length. Uh, are you seeing green shoots in services, for instance, because the trade number has come in very good at 12.1%. Uh, do you think uh, you can see green shoots in the non-agricultural part? See, uh, the, to me, the more positive number is the positive number on manufacturing. Manufacturing okay. has come in at a robust number. And manufacturing then tends to link up with a number of other sectors, including trade Hmm. and number of segments in services. If we can continue to hold up manufacturing for a while longer, hmm. then there is a, the possibility of services picking up will be high. Okay. There are some uh, areas of concerns and one of the areas of concern I think is... Electricity, sir. Compared to... Uh, electricity continues to be poor and that is partly, I think, uh, a reflection of the fact that our uh, major uh, electricity uh, boards, the, the ones who supply electricity, mm -hmm. continue to face uh, significant problems. Yes. And uh, th there is a mismatch between capacity and what is actually being produced. Therefore. Public administration and defense, I think, will probably for the remainder of this year stay low, though it may pick up if the pay commission recommendation is implemented and it will matter as to how that recommendation phases in and when will it be implemented from.
Okay, if the seventh day commission is implemented, it, uh, it, it will get reflected in public administration? It will uh, uh, largely feed, uh, feed into public administration okay. and defense. Fair enough. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Anand, for explaining that to us. Uh, well, uh, Shubda, anything else that you want to add? Uh, the uh, uh, mathematical calculation of why taxes have uh, uh, not shown up as much in this uh, uh, quarter as much as it did in previous no, quarters. Uh, quite right. I think when we were talking earlier, I just wanted to know the net taxes on products. Uh, we understand that subsidy outlay has been low. And probably that is overall the net number is looking at uh, a negative number. So if you could just throw some light on it. Yeah, the subsidy growth has been negative. In yeah. fact, product yeah. subsidies you know. have yes. grown. Hmm. Uh, overall by a negative, by themselves by minus 18% from okay. what I have with me. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, subsidies themselves are negative, which is why one expects one perhaps expect, the yeah. difference between GVA and GDP to be a little higher. higher. But uh, that's not how it is. Yeah. Uh, well, Professor Adan, thank you very much. Uh, we will mull over everything that you have told us in terms of the difference between GVA and GDP. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the chief of the Central Statistical Organization, the chief statistician, explaining the intricacies of the GVA and the GDP. Over to you.